Feel the energy? I'm feeling it. It is in the air. Spring's right around the corner. It certainly is. Are you excited? I am. I am, for sure. Home show season's coming up. People are going to be landscaping. Mm -hmm. Flowers are going to be in bloom. What else is going to be showing up on people's front lawns, Mike? Oh, for sale signs, for sure. And now's the time, if you're planning to buy or sell, get out there a little bit ahead. Get yourself ready for that spring market. So today on Hitting Home, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. Getting your home sale ready for the spring market. You don't want to miss it. And welcome to Hitting Home with Mike and Arif. And today, as we mentioned, we're going to be talking about getting your home ready for the spring market. Mm -hmm. Mike, it's probably a realtor's most exciting uh, season, if you will. Well, it is, and it's because it's, it's typically the busiest season. And there's reasons for that. And one of the primary reasons is a lot of the young buyers and sellers, they want to time that move uh, to happen over the summer months when kids are out of school. Absolutely. Um, it's also the best time to showcase a home. The gardens are in bloom. Yep. Uh, the days are longer. It's warm. We've just come through a winter. Uh, people are getting their uh, income tax checks back, so they got money for that down payment. So a lot of things line up and make that spring market the best time for you to go out and list your home or go out and find that home to buy. Absolutely. There's no doubt, though. It is absolutely also a psychological time. The house didn't change, but we're not looking at just tonalities of snow and slush and sand. We're actually no. looking at vibrant colors. You can see everything. A home shows best, right? You can and see the backyard. You can see the gardens. You can see the roof. You know, in the wintertime, we're covered in snow in this province. But so. this is also a boom for the do-it-yourself or the home improvement marketplace as well, right? Oh, for right? sure. I mean, people are redoing their decks or they're well, you know, putting you, up potted you, plants. You want to get, and there's a whole list of things, and that's why we want to touch on a few of those today. And and getting yourself ready to list your home. And, and one of the first things you want to do is take an inventory, walk around your grounds, walk through the house, try and see it through the eyes of a buyer. Bring someone in who's a little more objective, who's going to point out some of the, the things that a buyer may you know, take concern with. Uh, and once you have that list, set to work on, on prioritizing them and fixing some of those things because you want your, show, your home to be curb, curb ready or yep. have curb appeal. Absolutely. And then you also, as someone's walking through it, you want to create that sense of need and want with your house. Yeah, you want to visualize yourself yeah. living there. That's that's mm -hmm. for sure. But today's show is so important, and to be quite honest, it's, it's quite exciting because now's the time. Yeah. Come spring, after March break, come April, when the blooms are coming out, it's too late because how often, how long would you say it takes the average home owner to get their home ready for sale, like in terms of That's decluttering, a, in terms well, of getting It's a case by ready. case. It depends. You, you, you have people, it's a couple weeks for sure. Oh, at least on the, on, on the short side. But if you've been in your home for a long time, there's a lot of things that, you know, there's some may call clutter. You may call it just accumulation over time. It's clutter, You Mike. You, you want to purge. <laughs> call it clutter. And, and what I would recommend as well is bring a realtor on board. I mean, start uh, perusing around to, to figure out that realtor that you want to use. And there's a number of checklists you want to do in finding that perfect realtor for you. I mean, you've got to be compatible. You want to know that they're going to have the time to spend with you and that, that realtor who's advertising uh, that you may have saw as advertisements or her advertisements, that's the actual person you're going to have come to your door and be working side mm -hmm. by side with you. But they're going to be able to help you before you ever put a sign on your line and pointing out some of those things. They can be objective. So let's talk about this though, Mike. If you actually look back at the catalog of shows that we've had over the last year, we've had home inspectors, we've had mm -hmm. landscape architects or designers, yep. we've had home stagers. There was a purpose for all of those people, oh, for sure. guests being on our show. They're all part of the, you know, they all play a role to in the before, during, and after. What we're talking after. about today, yep. Yep. right? So, so in terms of getting your home ready for sale, you're going to want to bring on that designer, that home stager, that inspector, yep. because that inspector is going to let you know what the buyer is going to walk yep. through and, and see and point out, and may may actually uh, challenge the value mm -hmm. of your of your. You listing. may want that, we, and we talked on that having that pre-inspection. Yeah. It's, it's, it's costly for, for sure, and the buyer is going to want to do their own inspection for sure, sure anyway. So, Absolutely. You know, I'm on the fence on whether or not you want to do that, but you want to ha have someone come through the home who can with point out eye. with you the things that an inspector is likely to find in that inspection report. And as for staging, um, if your home, your, your realtor is going to let you know whether or not you should stage your home or not stage your home because so, you may be a good decorator yourself and your home is stage ready. If you've so. got your top three things though, what do you want to talk about today? 
Top three things, I would say first and foremost, you want to start forming those relationships with the people who are going to walk you through and help you through the whole process of selling your home. Secondly is getting that house in order and getting that house to the point where you're getting maximum value for it when you show it and you're getting the most people coming in to see it. Uh, and again, some of those people that uh, you're going to line up are going to help you to do okay. that. So Mike, I, I want to sell my house and I'm bringing, you in, I'm bringing you on board. I've never yep. done this before, and I'm trusting on you to make sure that I'm sale ready, mm -hmm. that I get the most out of the, uh, my pricing, I get the yep. most value for the sale of my home, right? And it's gonna be a competitive market out there, so I need to know that uh, my house is gonna stand out amongst mm -hmm. the crowded uh, field of, of potential yep. homes out there. Or, or stand out at least as well as the others, because there'll be a lot of homes in competition with you because it is that busiest spring market, busiest time of the year. So. Okay, so you're telling me I've gotta do this now, mm -hmm. so what are we looking at? Well, you're, you're gonna, again, as we or stated earlier, reiterate is you're gonna look to see what clutter, what purging can be done. If you can put some stuff in storage, that's great. Uh, perhaps in your move, you're thinking, you know, I think we're going to get a new couch once we move. We're going to get new this, that, and the other. Buy it now. Make, stage your house with the, pro, with the uh, items that you're going to buy for your next house, but instead of waiting till you're in there, use it now because it'll add value to your home there. Um, getting that's everything clean. Isn't it? That's you know, interesting because yeah. the fact is I'm going to be pulling that couch out. Well, you know, there's a little bit of labor to right? it, but yeah, it looks good. So you're, in a sense, you're, you're doing a little bit of your own staging, but you're staging with stuff you're taking with you. It's good to do all the stuff that you're going to leave behind, painting and maybe replacing flooring and that, but sometimes it's just a matter of getting rid of that ratty old couch and chair, and now's the time to do that for sure. So get that house show ready, and then sit down with your realtor and start planning that marketing strategy. Uh, you know, you're, aside from just being on the MLS, there's a number of other places you can showcase your home. I, I do personal websites now for each of my listings. Uh, um, so you know, talk to your client, or talk as a realtor, talk to the client, the client talk to the realtor to find out how you're gonna put that uh, production together for that website. You may want to use video. Video is quite popular now. Um, there's a lot of things you can do and be involved with uh, with your realtor and that's going to go towards marketing that home. Okay, so bottom line is that uh, there's commissions involved and I'm going to be paying, yeah. so nothing is free, right? So Nothing's if I'm free. going with a realtor who's suggesting to me that I'm going to be doing photography or a drone shot or uh, mm -hmm. um, what do you call one of those virtual reality yeah. uh, tours of the home, these are all things that are going to help my house stand out or help me get more views because it is it a is. numbers game, yeah. right? There's X number of people in the market looking to buy a home. I need to know, know that uh, people are busy. Yeah. Right. So typically speaking, if you've got two partners, uh, a family who are looking and both spouses or whatever are, are working nine to five, right? People are going to be viewing homes from their desktop. Oh, yeah. They're going to be and, viewing and homes from their mobile phones. And, and you've got to busy. grab their attention there. Mm -hmm. And it's not just your words in the comments as a realtor. It's those photographs. You want professional quality photographs. The days of just taking that picture basically of the far corner of the room on your on your cell phone and throwing that up there, that's fine. But that's not going to set you apart from every other home that people are going to be seeing when they're searching on MLS. So Real I think there's a, great, there's a great segue there, Mike. And mm -hmm. I think when we come back from the break let's, break, let's actually explore that a little bit. What's the difference between what's offered out there in the market in terms of the type of realtor and, uh, and, and what's the best uh, yeah. choice for you? So okay, when we excellent. come back from hitting home, uh, to hitting home with Mike and Arf, we're talking more about getting your house ready for sale in the spring market. And welcome back to Hitting Home with Mike and RF. And we're talking about getting your home ready for sale in the spring market. Mike, we've talked about decluttering. We've talked about getting the curb appeal ready. More importantly, mm -hmm. I want to sell my house, Mike. Yeah. And I want to make sure that my home stands out amongst the crowd in the marketplace. Yes. And in order to do that, I need a professional. And I'm sure. counting on that professional to tell me why I should go with them why I should go with their team or their brand, and what they're gonna to do to make sure that I get the most value from my home in a timely manner, and that my objectives are met. I get the price I yep. want, I get the time I want, I get the peace of mind I want. Take me through that, Mike. What makes a really good realtor, and what makes a great realtor, and what makes an, an, an also ran, as you called it? Well, a good blend of experience and enthusiasm, as I think I stated on a previous show, and talking about uh, some of the things I would look for okay, in a so realtor. What would you do? And yeah, you want that enthusiasm. You want to know that person is there for you. you. You can pick up the phone at any time during the course of that 
and they're going to be there, and you're going to get that person who you want. Uh, it's not being shuffled off to somebody else. So you, you want to form a good relationship with that realtor. You want to know that that realtor know, knows the region, that your neighborhood knows the city. And, you know, because a lot of the buyers are going to be coming from elsewhere. And you're going to be an ambassador for the city. You've got to just as much sell the city of Barrie to them as you do sell any particular home. So you want to know that that realtor, while they're out there showing homes, as, as getting someone excited that I'm not leaving this town until I find that home that, that I'm going to buy. And then they're going to lead you to your house. You want to know that your house is standing out and they're going to point out all those key features of your home that make it stand out. So what you're rest. saying is basically, uh, and, and they say that, you know, like you don't, you don't marry the spouse, you marry the family. You're not buying the home, you're also buying the neighborhood, right? Yeah, so, a, so you're a brand analogy. ambassador yeah. for Barry, you're, you're going to be a brand ambassador for my neighborhood. Yep. So I'm counting on you then to do your homework. I can't mm -hmm. just be one more of your many clients that you're representing. No. I've got to be the only client that you're representing. Well, in you've my got mind, a, right? in your mind, yeah. you've got to believe that you're, you're that you're significant. You're the only person I'm, I'm working with. And and there's so much more opportunity for marketing, as I touched on earlier, through through video, through through uh, commentary, and exposing that house through all of those means through social media and that. If you're a good real, you're realtor, you're doing that, and that's where you get to shine as that ambassador for both the house, the neighborhood, and for the city. I got to tell itself. you a bit of a bit of a joke. I mean, I, I'm a, I often okay. chuckle when I read the MLS listings, and I and I read sort of that some the poetic captions. license going on. There. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. it's amazing what a fixer upper is called. You know what I mean? It's called. Well, there's there's some cliche terms. I try to avoid using words like or terms like uh, gleaming hardwood floors or you know. Uh, Oh, there's a whole host of others in there, but uh, you want to sound original, but you want to be succinct, and you want to you want to touch on all the high notes of that house in the, in your uh, commentary that you're putting in there. Okay, so basically, uh, you're going to be doing open houses. You're going to be taking uh, clients through on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You're doing yeah. a website. You're doing a a, a, a virtual tour, mm -hmm. and you're really I don't want to say embellishing, but you're making sure you're highlighting the you're key points. You're representing the house and as best you can using all of those tools and. The open house, there's, there's another thing, a uh, little bone of contention with me is there's a lot of agents that don't bother doing them. And they say, oh, you, you never, buyers, it's like less than 1% of buyers come through the open houses. Well, you know what? I don't know. There's a lot of people driving around, and I've sold houses to people from open houses. It works. So it's one thing you need to and you can do. And it's also, from a realtor's perspective, it's one way to show that I'm stepping up, I'm there, I'm spending three hours on a, on a Sunday at your home, showcasing your home to people. So and one of the things I've noticed actually is I, I've often seen, I've often, I go into open houses all the time, mm -hmm. I, I want to get ideas and I dream build, oh, that yeah. kind of thing. That's, you're the guy, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. I don't know if you're getting that house sale. Call that a tire kicker, I believe. Well, no, the fact of the matter is, I mean, when I'm buying a home, I want to get inspiration on what, For it, sure. what it is There's I'm doing. a lot doing. you can learn. But also, if I'm selling, I want to go through open houses to see what has oh, this person to. done that I should be doing in my You're open doing house your as research, well. I'm doing for sure. Research. Yeah. But the other thing I've noticed is that there's oftentimes somebody else, not the person whose name is on the sign out front as the, as the listing agent, yeah. who's repping the open house. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I don't discount that because if you're a realtor and you've got four or five listings and you've told three of them, they've wanted open houses that weekend. You can only be in one place at a time. Uh, the alternative to that is saying, no, I can't do one this week. But if you can bring a, another agent in from, from, your, from your office to sit in and show that house, that's better than not showing it at all. So, so I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I want your opinion on something, though, Mike. I want your opinion on this. And that is, um, if I'm hiring the person or the brand, mm -hmm. should I expect to have that person or brand representing me? Um, or am I getting, a, am I getting an, uh, an associate of? And what's the difference well, to me? The, if some of the bigger teams that are out there, yeah, the, your chances of having that person are, are a little less than the solo agent who works for themselves. So okay, sure but what does that mean to me and what should I ensure? If I, if um, I am going to hire that team and I'm not saying anything against teams, teams obviously no. work, but what do I want to make sure for myself? Because again, the team may have 20 listings or 30 listings, but I'm the only one who matters to me. So what do well, I need as a guarantee all, all from All the qualifiers the team? you would have for the team leader, you should have for the agent coming in. So it's, it's splitting hairs a little bit there. If you want that person, you absolutely have that person, well, that's something you're going to have to negotiate with, gonna pay with for that it. group. And you're going and to you're pay, for pay for it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, um, so what are you it, buying when you, what, what am I buying when I sign on the dotted line for buyer's representation or seller's representation? What am I getting? You're, you're, you're buying my knowledge, my enthusiasm, 
um, you're buying my negotiating skills first and foremost because someone's going to be bringing offers in and I've got to sit across the table there and try and get you your highest and best uh, price and the best possible terms for you. And so you need to keep, you need someone who can keep that negotiation working in your favor. So you're making a very clear point to me as a potential seller. Mm -hmm. Don't get, don't get distracted by the fact that the person who's, who I'm going to be working with as my single point of contact on a daily basis or regular basis may or may not be the name of the person who's, who's on the sign. That'll be up to you individually. They're a qualified professional. Yeah. They yep. know they're, they know what they're doing. They've got their task, and they also have a team to go back to and and make sure that they can bounce the ideas off. Yeah. Uh, off yeah. Of. So I wouldn't get so, too too hung up on right. that. But but if you're just as a word up, if you're expecting that person, there's a good chance you may not get that person. So don't get too hung up on that. Okay. All right. Yeah. So there's a system in place. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can't get out of this segment without talking about commission. So whether you're with a team or whether you're with a solo agent, and depending on the a la carte services that you're looking to get. T talk to me about yeah. commissions. Well, that's something you are going to have to negotiate with that individual agent. Okay. And um, there's, to get overly hung up on it, I, I would suggest you don't because I would be more focused on what is this person going to do for me? Uh, how confident am I that they are going to bring me the price I want? Because yes, you may find a discounted commission uh, rate out there, but you may learn at the end of the day that there was a price to pay for that in what you actually sold okay, for so what, the number of days on market. What, what I heard you say you. though, what yeah. I really heard you say was, if you focus on the commission to save a couple of dollars, mm -hmm. instead of focusing on the value add that you're gonna get from those yeah. services and what an agent can bring to the table, mm -hmm. in terms of, you actually stand to sacrifice a, yeah. a much larger, uh, uh, you know, sell, selling price, for sure. right? In, yeah. in a profit and, and And there's something that's said over and over within my industry, and it holds true too. If you're, you're sitting down with that realtor, and you're able to beat them down on their commission, should you not be coming away going, well, how, are they, how if they can't protect their own, their own income here, are they gonna be able to protect my price on the property when they're down in the scrum there doing the negotiating? Great point, we gotta go yeah. to break, but when we come back, let's talk about the flip side of the equation, let's talk about the buyer in this transaction. Welcome back to Hitting Home with Mike and RF, and uh, we've been talking about the spring market and getting your house ready for sale. We have. Let's flip the other side of the equation, Mike. Let's talk about the buyer and getting the buyer yeah. ready. Well, buyer needs to get ready too, and just as we said about the seller to, you know, you, you want to do this ahead of that day that you step out to start looking at home. So you want to start uh, working with, with, with your lender, finding out who your lender is going to be, start Absolutely. interviewing lenders. And there's a number of questions, and we'll come around to that. You, you, you want to find that realtor who's going to showcase homes for you. If you just want to go solo and knock on doors and show up at open houses, you're going to be missing out on a lot of product out there and, you're, and a lot of good information that comes along with that product. That well, the key is you got to know what you can afford. I mean, it yeah. is one thing, absolutely dream build, absolutely know what it oh, is that's sure. important to you. I always tell my clients, uh, because clients actually ask us, you know, what kind of a home should I be buying? Well, yes. what are you qualified to buy? Yeah. And you don't want to fall in love with that home you're never going to own, or no. at least not own right now. But once you know what you're qualified to buy, then you can apply those constraints on the must haves versus the want to, yeah. want to haves. Well, and, and that's just as important in finance. And it's lists. Make those lists. What are the things I absolutely have to have? What are the things I absolutely don't want to have in a house? So when you do uh, set out and you do uh, have that conversation with that realtor who's going to be helping you. Now, if you're just sold a home or selling a home and you're also buying and that is it's likely the same realtor, you have a relationship with them. But you want to be clear on the, the haves, must-haves, haves and have-nots, as well as the ge geographical region that you want to work within. Absolutely. You don't want your realtor showing you homes out in Elkona when you want to be buying up towards Elmville. Well, and the other thing is, Mike, the, the last thing a realtor wants to be doing and the last thing you should be wanting to be doing is wasting, wasting a lot of no, time going out looking at homes time, that you're not going to buy. including your own. So here's the thing. Clients are coming in and I tell clients, you know, I sure as heck hope that you didn't just wake up one morning and decide that you need to buy a house tomorrow. Yeah. Right? So if, you've got, if this has been nagging at you, if this has been on your mind, it's something that you want to do. Well, it's and a life plan. You're, exciting. you're doing it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So the right time to be looking is right now. You want to get into the spring market. You want to get into that sort of April 1st market. Yeah. In March, you better be sitting down with your mortgage broker or your sure. mortgage agent looking at how have I treated my credit so far? Because the truth of the matter is that when a bank is deciding on whether or not they're going to give you the money to buy the house, 
Yep. They're it's more be, crucial than ever. They're going to be deciding whether you're going to qualify for 5% down or you're going to be required to put down 10, 15, 20, mm -hmm. or even more. And there is even more. Yes. Don't get fooled to think that you can only go in with 20%. There are no. some, some lenders, depending on what the buyer qualifies for, yeah. and if you're buying in town versus out of town on well mm -hmm. and septic, they may actually pull back to 65%. You may be putting down a 35% mm -hmm. uh, down payment or you may require secondary yeah. financing, so, a second mortgage. So there are lots of things yeah. to be looking at as a, as, a, as a buyer. For sure. And you need to know well in advance, well before you sign the ink on an offer to purchase, where you've got to scramble to have an answer within five days, you better be well prepared. Yes. Right. Now, with what you've just told me, is would you be saying the exact same, or have been saying this exact same thing, three, four years ago, or, or is this a product of where we're at now? Um, I think it's been a, a principle for sure. Mm -hmm. It's certainly been a magnified principle. It's crucial now, uh, yeah. right now. Yeah. The way, and you know what? I mean, again, we can beat this one up uh, all, all we want. The fact of the matter is, we're seeing in the headlines that the federal government is being told they overshot the boundary. And yes, these stress tests. You look at the headlines. Stress test is actually doing more damage than good. Yeah. We're, we are reading that in the headlines, and that's something that you and I have been saying for yeah, well over a year. Yeah, we beat it to death now, but it, but it, but <laughs> we it's, have. It's significant. But though. to answer your question specifically, the principles have always been the same. Yeah. It's just been magnified today. Yeah. Absolutely. For sure. So, so, but uh, we want to be sitting with that buyer, right? You may be representing, you may be double ending as a, as a realtor, a mm. buyer and a seller. You may be representing one or the other, but uh, there's a good chance also that your seller is about to be a buyer. Okay. Right? They've, they've yeah. now sold their home and where are they moving into? So yeah. if I'm listing my home for sale, I'm not only interested mm. in when I'm selling, but I may get 30 day yeah. closing. Is that mm -hmm. going to be enough to make to get me out well, and into my next that home? That was going to be my next question to you is, is I am going to buy a home, whether I'm selling to buy or, or buying my first home. Um, how much time is enough time to approach you? And if there are any issues that I'm going to need to correct, um, what's the timeline I'm going to need? Uh, in, in a, is, there a, is there a general timeline bef between when we have that initial uh, consultation and when I'm actually going to be requiring it's those a, funds. It's a great question, Mike. And I think as we started the show, we talked about the importance of interviewing the realtor to decide who the realtor is. Do you have a chemistry or what the services <coughs> that they're going to offer? I think the exact same thing applies to working with your mortgage professional. Mm -hmm. uh, there are plenty of mortgage professionals out there who may say, come on in and I'll get you, I'll get you figured out. I'll, I'll, I'll turn around an approval for you in two hours or, yeah. or 24 hours. You know what? That's great. Looks good that's on a, a billboard. That's a, that's a it great doesn't play billboard. A, yeah. yeah. But the question really is to answer your specific question. It really depends on who are you as yeah, a buyer. It does. Um, how I said earlier, how have you treated your other credit to mm -hmm. date? How mm -hmm. have you treated your thousand dollar credit card or your ten thousand dollar credit card? Yeah. How have you treated your cell phone bill? How have you treated your other obligations like your car payments and your lease payments? Have you been late consistently, or have you always made them on time? Yeah. These are the type of things that are going to determine whether or not I can mm -hmm. turn around an approval for you in twenty four hours, or whether you and I are going to need to explore okay. other options and really work on some credit rebuilding or ensure that we've got a, a slightly healthier down payment? Are we going to need to bring in a co-signer? Are we bringing in a gifted down payment? Are you self-employed or employed? There are so many questions to ask. If you're looking at writing on the window sticker as you drive by the bank branch and think that, oh, there's, an, there, there's, there's a sign there that says that I can get qualified for this rate. Right. No. It's the same thing with buying a car. When you look in the fine print on the advertising in the, in the, in the um, newspaper about this car for sale, it's, if you read the fine print, it says only one car available at this price with these yeah. options. Well, they're, these are, you know these are capture tools. They are and capture every tools. industry has them. And uh, here's another question uh, I would put to you is... Uh, okay, you know what? We got to pick this up and we got to do this as another show, Mike. We could go on in this one forever. We're closing out already. Yeah, okay. so absolutely. So, you Let's know, come what? back to this. If you're enjoying what you're seeing on Hitting Home, check out our website, check us out on social media. We've got a whole uh, catalog of shows there for you. We'll see you next time on Hitting Home. Thank you.